What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the Fishman, the legend, the rebel hero, Admiral Raddus. His tale starts in the year 65 BBY, born in the icy polar region of the planet Mon Cala, 33 years before the Battle of Naboo. Since his youth, he wanted to serve his people, being both civically and militarily minded, and was able to work his way up to mayor of the city Nystullum, while also gaining a place in King Lee Char's court, being in charge of planetary defense. Only a year after the Clone Wars ended, in 18 BBY, the Empire was already wanting to subjugate its fishy citizens and sent their alien diplomacy expert to Mon Cala. When Moff Willif Tarkin arrived to clear up the confusion, he placed the Imperial Star Destroyer the Sovereign over their watery world and sent Ambassador Telvar to ensure a trade deal with Lee Char. Radis was able to see where the Empire was heading and urged his king to consider seceding from the Empire. While Lee Char was considering this option, Vader was tired of waiting and invaded Dak City with three of his Inquisitors. To make this political atmosphere even worse, Vader confronted then Commander Akbar around the same time Ambassador Telvar was killed when his shuttle was destroyed. This forced Tarkin to rain down Imperial power, resulting in an orbital bombardment and attacks from squads of Thai subs. Radis stayed with Chief of Security Akbar and Lee Char as they coordinated the evacuation of the surface cities, which once completed, allowed him to sick these large whale-like beasts upon the Imperial forces, generating enormous waves that would disrupt the invasion. The King sent Akbar to defend the northern settlements, while Radis was in charge of the southern pole, and here is where we really start to see his military genius shine through. Though vastly outnumbered, Radis knew that his species and their Quarren allies were far better skilled at underwater warfare, and of course had a better understanding of the geography and the tides. Using this advantage, Radis sent out teams in different directions to draw Imperial forces away from the main city, and then having them set up in areas that restricted the Imperials to attacks from only a single direction. Radis stayed in these cities, using the tight corridors to funnel fighters into kill zones. Tarkin, however, was not an easily defeated opponent, and as he ramped up the offensive, Radis came up with the idea to link shields from multiple vessels in the Mon Cala Mercantile Fleet, essentially running them like batteries in parallel, which made them immune to even the triangulated fire of three Star Destroyers. After Tarkin used these ships to destroy the northern cities, Radis decided that they could not just wait the Empire out, knowing that they could just keep Star Destroyers in orbit long after their shields ran out, and so they had to make a break for it. This fleet had to de-link their shields and make the push past Tarkin's ships, and although two of them were destroyed, three of these Mon Cala ships were able to escape. King Lee Char would be captured, but many of the other buildings had already been built to double as city ships, following the near loss of their homeworld during the Clone Wars. Not to be captured again, many of the Mon Cala buildings fled in the Great Exodus, leaving the Empire to rule over a mostly abandoned ball of water, and this evacuation included a vessel that was Nystullum's city governance tower, which Radis once used during his time as mayor of that city, and it would be this ship that would get modified to become the Profundity. Many Mon Cala ships were modified into warships, making up some of the earliest muscle in the Rebel fleet. For this contribution and his expertise, Radis gained a seat on the Rebel Council, but was known to be very shrewd when negotiating, and devoid of all fluff and pleasantries. He was growing very tired with the lack of direction, and Jin Erso provided the catalyst that Radis had been waiting for. The severity of the news of the Death Star was still not enough to galvanize many in the Rebel Council, but Radis decided the die had been cast, and it was time to cross the metaphorical Rubicon and engage the Empire with the full might of the Rebel fleet. Mon Mothma had ordered directly against this, and Radis was commanded to simply escort the Tanta V4 and Princess Leia to Tatooine, where she was to meet with a supposed surviving Jedi General, but Radis decided that if he threw all the forces under his command into the fighting, then the Alliance would have to jump in with him. While still at the base on Yavin 4, he got word from Rogue One that they had started to engage Imperial's planet side, and Radis took the profundity and led the jump to hyperspace. Realizing that it was all or nothing, Mon Mothma had to agree, and the full force of the Rebel Alliance descended on Scarif. Again, the Empire was at the whim of Radis's genius, and when Bodhi Rock was able to tell the Admiral that they needed to take out the Shield Gate, the Mon Calamari knew exactly what to do. In their attempt to defend this Shield Gate, the Imperials had positioned two Star Destroyers directly over this crucial asset, but in a great act of military judo, he used his opponent's greater strength against them, 
and ordered the Sphirna class corvette, the Lightmaker, to ram into the Star Destroyer, the Persecutor, which had just been disabled by ion cannons, and push it directly into the Intimidator, causing a chain reaction that took out the planetary shield. With Vader's subsequent arrival, the Devastator tore into the profundity, and his boarding party nearly captured the Death Star plans, before Leia in the CR-90 narrowly escaped. Admiral Raddus, hero of the Mon Calamari Exodus, decided he would go down with the ship, though the details are murky here, and it is unclear if Vader finished him off before chasing down the plans, or if his death was at the hands of Tarkin and the Death Star. Gone but not forgotten, decades later, General Organa knew that it was the bold decision made by Raddus, which saved the Rebellion, and thus the galaxy, and to memorialize this she named the MC-85 Star Cruiser the Raddus. Akbar was one of Raddus's most vocal supporters during the time of the Rebellion, into the New Republic era, and into the Resistance, and he often expressed this when he felt that history was repeating itself, with the ineptitude of so many well-intentioned leaders. Raddus's namesake would also strike a huge blow to the Empire's imitators, when this MC-85 crashed into the Supremacy, crippling Snoke's flagship, and destroying at least six Star Destroyers. So that's it for his history, and the only cool behind-the-scenes fact is that Admiral Raddus was based on Winston Churchill, meant to show a strong, brash leader who was willing to go against the grain, with his voice actor saying that he wanted a mix of Churchill and how Patton was portrayed in the Patton movie. And I think that it is awesome that he was in charge of planetary defense back under King Lee Char's court, and would become most famous for taking out the planetary defense shield over the planet Scarif. So that's it for Admiral Raddus. Be sure to connect with us, support the channel, and get your own copies of the reference material used in making this video by checking out the links in the description below. But most important of all, remember, a leader's strength comes from his jowls, and the Force will be with you. Always.